Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Hannah Bennyhead. I'm an artist and architect living and working right here in gorgeous Tottenham, North London. This channel, I talk about all things art, business of art, bit of architecture. So if that's something that you're interested in, please subscribe and join along on this journey. It's quite a wild ride. In this particular video, we're going to talk about how to turn jealousy into inspiration. Let's do this, shall we? glasses on maybe my aunt neighbor's in hopefully she's leaving I don't want to I don't want to do this video without being able to hear me it's too cringe she's coming she's coming okay guys let's get into it shall we today we are talking about how to be inspired instead of being jealous. I feel like at the moment we are really in the age of comparison, especially with apps like Instagram, which is can be like brutal for like scrolling through and just making yourself feel absolutely rubbish. I have a real like love-hate relationship with Instagram. Sometimes I'm like, what an incredible tool and I've had some really amazing opportunities come from Instagram and other times I'm like, this makes me feel sad. <laughs> and I'm the kind of girl who feels a lot of feelings. So jealousy is absolutely one of those. I have no doubt you're the same. Why don't you like this video if you've ever scrolled through Instagram and felt jealous of someone? Share the love, let's show each other that we're not alone. So I thought I would create a video where I kind of show you specific examples of how I've had that like pang of jealousy and how I actually turn it into inspiration. First of all, let me say that I don't think jealousy in itself is actually a bad thing. I think it can be a really helpful tool for you to understand what you want from life. Let me give you an example. I follow this amazing shepherd on Instagram. I know, random, but you know, I got into farming during the pandemic. The videos calmed me down. Anyway, this farmer, she's amazing, and she lives on some remote island in the middle of Scotland. She's like the world's best breeder of sheep dogs. She's also just like a badass farmer who taught her husband how to farm, which is like pretty rare in like male dominated farming industry. Am I impressed by her? Yes. Am I inspired by this woman? Yes. Am I jealous of her? No, 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 no. Farming looks like hard work. I'm good, thanks. On the contrary. On the contrary? On the contrary? On the contrary? Contrary. 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 On the contrary. If I was walking through King's Cross and um, I saw an amazing piece of artwork and it was like fun, bold, colourful, immersive, interesting, I would see that and I'd be like, am I impressed? Yes. Am I inspired? Yes. And then I'd look up the artist and I'd be like, am I jealous? Yes, I am. Like, I would love to do that. And this is what I mean by jealousy, kind of helping you out, figure out what you do and you do not want from life. For me, it's all about what you do next, which makes the big difference. I bought this um, book recently. Sorry, this is gonna be back to front. I promised myself I'd get myself a camera if I last three months doing this. So until then, we're back to front, apologies. I actually have two of, of his books. Um, if you haven't read these, I really, really recommend them. They're so easily digestible. Um, and this one is called Still Like an Artist. And it is all about how you kind of take work that you can be inspired by and use it in your own creative practice. It also kind of frees you up from thinking about this idea of having to be original because is anything really original? No. So we are taking principles from this book 
um, when we're talking about artists work that we're looking at today. So with the artists that I've chosen today, we are going to steal some ideas, but we're gonna use the principles from this book about how to steal like a good artist. There's this really handy table in the book that talks about good for theft versus bad theft. Are you honouring them or are you degrading them? Are you studying their practice or are you just skimming the surface? Are you stealing from many artists and not stealing from one? Are you sure to credit the artists that you're in being inspired by instead of plagiarising them? Will you transform or imitate their work and will you remix it or will you rip it off? And these principles are essential when you're thinking about how to steal ideas. I reached out to all the artists on my list and I asked them if they would mind me sharing their work on this video and also if I could ask them a specific question about their practice. And amazingly, they all said yes, which is so kind of them. I have definitely had like a pang of jealousy when I see them post work online. But the thing is, when I see artists and I see them doing something that I feel jealous of, I think, okay, Hannah, if this is something that you want, it's time to study, understand how they've done it, so you can do it too. On my superstar list is Tierney Milne, Sandeep Johal, and Adam Nathaniel Forum. Now, what I'm particularly interested in is not the artwork itself, because all these artists, the work that they create, their identity is so intertwined into the artwork that they make. I couldn't replicate it even if I wanted to. What I'm interested in is how they're doing what they're doing or what they're doing behind the scenes that is enabling them to create the artwork that I feel so inspired by. And so that's what I focus my questions on. artist we are stealing from is Tierney Milne. The first two artists that I'm covering are based in Vancouver and that's because if you watch my video about uh, my journey from an architect to artist you know that I moved to Vancouver when I was 30. So these two artists particularly influenced me during my time when I was in Vancouver and also still to this day. Tierney was the first artist who I met who was like a jobbing artist working making money from her creativity in a role that I thought, oh my God, I would love to do that. She works in public art, but also creates these like really interesting small scale pieces. I love that she worked really large scale, but then also worked in like a variety of mediums. But one of the things that I really love is how she kind of like extends her art practice into her online presence. And what I mean by that is that when you kind of visit her Instagram or even her website, you feel kind of like you're entering this sort of like tierney world, which I love. It doesn't feel like just documentation, like the documentation feels like an extension of the project. Even if you go to her website, she creates mixtapes. So you can even like listen to the music that she listens to and that inspires her artwork. Recently, she completed a mural and I saw her, I think she said on a story or on a post something like, oh, I'll share this properly when I've figured out how best to document it. And then a few days later, she posted this. a constant collaborator called Just Jash and they clearly just make like such a great team. So my question to Tierney was, how do you think about documentation of your artwork? Do your clients see the value in your documentation or do you invest in it out of your own pocket? I found her answer super interesting. She said, I definitely love documenting for my own sake, especially if I love the work. If the client is able to fold fees for documentation into the budget ahead of time, then that's great. But otherwise, I can often entice them into paying for it once they see it out on social with people enjoying it. And I was like, wait, what? You can get them to pay after you have done the work? To me, I was like, that I've never done that. I said like what's the incentive for them to pay you once you've already done the work and she said the incentive is if they want to use any of the shots at all I often include a usage fee into her contracts 
it's such a good idea. Like I have started to invest more in photography. I just think that's such a good tip. Like if you are going to invest your own money into photography or taking the time to like curate really amazing ways that you share the work online, which is above and beyond your contract with definitely in my case it is, I think I should definitely start putting that into contracts. You know, protect the intellectual property of documentation, especially as it takes time and money and skill, and we should make sure those things are valued. So I just love that from her. I thought that was really helpful. Yoink, stolen. <laughs>
and that's that's quite the shift and i have tried <laughs> to get the work commissions where you challenge the audience in public and it is very difficult to do um and that's why i am thinking about how i can get my work into a different context because you know what i fundamentally love doing is telling stories and sometimes the stories aren't always happy stories do you know what i mean and realistically are these going to get commissioned in public probably not no i do love joy and happiness and celebration and all that jazz but also like you know life isn't always like that and i don't want to be pigeonholed into only telling those stories if this is something that i want to do i think i'll probably just have to like put on my own show or create work which could exist in a gallery context because at the moment I don't really think that is actually something that I do and it's something I should think about if it's something I want for my career. I'm not quite sure when I came across Adam's work but I absolutely adore it and it just falls in that sweet spot between art and architecture for me that I'm just like oh my god I, I love it so much. Not only do I absolutely adore his work, and also I just love that he has an opinion. It's still quite rare for someone to have an opinion. I mean, not in the art world, plenty of opinions in the art world, but in architecture, ah, oh, just everyone is so conformative. It's such a snooze fest. One of the things I find particularly inspiring about him is how prolific he seems to be. Like, if you go onto his website, he has done so much. It ranges from public artwork, to high-end homewares, to affordable merch. He's even written a book called Queer Spaces, which I have bought and I'm very excited to read. But his work is intentionally not to everyone's taste. So I was really interested to understand how he actually did these projects. So I asked Adam, your portfolio is very diverse from installations to homeware and your approach is not at all mainstream. So I would love to know how many of your projects are self-initiated and how you deal with the level of risk that this approach entails. And he answered, early on whilst I was working at Architecture Productions, I did a few self-initiated projects like the flute lamps, which were based on a subscription I gathered from for about 30 people. That's interesting, I kind of assume that's maybe like a Kickstarter or something, but this is the important bit. Often based upon me approaching companies and suggesting ideas of ways that we could collaborate. Shy Burns getting out, hey? And then he reiterated, not only do I approach, but I can be very, very annoying. Basically, I never ever stop trying it on. I said, yes, persistence and resilience is key in this career. Adam replied, 100%. And again, what I love about this is like, you know, when we're scrolling through Instagram and we just see some like incredible collaboration, that might take a year of convincing behind the scenes, we don't know. I love this idea of like pitching your dream collaborations to the people that you want to collaborate with, not waiting for things to land on your doorstep, like going and getting them. I have two like dream collaborators, like in my mental mood board. I don't think I'm at the place where I could pitch anything just yet, but, but should we start the manifestation process right now? Let's do it. One day, one day. So that's my little rundown. I hope that was helpful for you. I would love to know um, what would be like your top five people that you would steal from, and maybe I could go and steal some stuff off them as well. I am about to actually melt, so that's enough from me for today, and I shall catch you guys next week. Peace.